there seems to be a pretty stark divide between Christians and what video games they're allowed to play. Should you play any video games at all because they're addictive and they're a waste of time and there's violence and sexual content? Or does it not even matter what kind of game you play? Let's talk about it. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Crossplay. I'm Pastor Mark. This is my dog, Coda. He is an attention hog, and he's very clingy. So I'm just going to set him down to the side right here. Today, I want to talk to you about violence in video games and should Christians not play certain games because of the content that's in those games. This seems to be a topic that carries a lot of emotion with it, and that's somewhat understandable because you're basically dealing with someone's passion and hobby. And when someone comes along to you and says, hey... You're not allowed to do that. There tends to be an emotional response to that. And so when emotions arise on both sides and you just end up fighting, that's not helpful. Now we're just arguing. And so I want to take a close look at video games and the content that's in them and see what guidance we have from God's word and how Christians should navigate this issue. So first we need to establish, and I don't think this is very controversial, that video games have violence in them. Even if you're going back to old games like Pac-Man and Mario, those are inherently, in some ways, violent. I mean, you're either this weird yellow mouth monster eating ghosts, or you're a plumber that's killing turtles. And that's true that it is actually violent, even if the graphical representation of that violence is really kind of rudimentary because it's limited by the technical hardware. But as time goes on, you get games like Doom and Mortal Kombat that have very violent depictions in them. And even now today in modern gaming, you still have games like Doom and Mortal Kombat, and now you have additional games like Hitman or The Last of Us Part Two or God of War that have really violent depictions in them. And that's just the violence side of things. I mean, now you have games with sexual content in them, like the original God of War games or Grand Theft Auto. And even though they're not showing the full sex act in those games, they're still showing something, and maybe that's a question for Christians and how we respond to that. And so knowing that this content exists, while acknowledging that it exists to different extents in different games, like we know that Zelda Breath of the Wild is violent, but not nearly as violent as something like Grand Theft Auto or Doom Eternal. We're left asking the question, how should Christians respond to this? Do we stop playing video games altogether because some of this content exists in some of these games? Or does it even matter? Can we play whatever we want, whenever we want? Well, first, I want to preface this by saying, I'm not God of your life. I have my own convictions that I think are based on biblical principles, and you might disagree with those convictions, and that's okay. But for now, I want to look at these two extreme responses. First, I want to say that both extreme responses, I think, are wrong. There's the extreme that says we need to cut out video games altogether because there's violence, there's sexuality, there's all this stuff in video games. It's addictive. It's a waste of time. You don't need to concern yourself with any video games. Just cut it out. You're better off without it. For me, this stance just doesn't hold a lot of water because it's impossible to hold it consistently. Like, I don't know where the line stops. Do you not watch any TV shows because there's violence and sex in that? Do you not watch movies because there's some violence and some sex in some movies? Do you not shop at the stores that sell those TV shows and movies and video games because they are in effect endorsing those things by selling those products? For me, it's just an emotional response that you can't hold consistently throughout your life. And the same goes for the other extreme as well. The side that says it doesn't really matter what we play because we're saved, we're free in Christ, we get to do whatever we want, and because it's all virtual, it's fake, it's nothing, nothing's really happening there. It's just a virtual character doing virtual things in a virtual world. And this response, I think, ignores the real impact that virtual things can have in our world. Just because something is virtual or fake doesn't mean it can't have an impact on our heart or on our minds. And what's happening here is that both of these responses are making an idol out of something. Either you make an idol out of yourself and your response and your righteousness by saying, I don't play any video games at all. You don't need to do any of that. You make an idol out of yourself or you make an idol out of your passion and your hobby and you say, no one can touch my video games. Not even the word of God can tell me not to play a game. And I think it's fair to say that both of those extremes are not good responses because they're not biblical responses. So when we want to take a biblical response... What does God's word have to say about video games? The answer is pretty much nothing. 
because video games weren't in the mind of the authors when they were writing the Bible. Video games didn't exist. They didn't even really have anything like video games to talk about when they wrote the Bible. But we do have some really good guiding principles that I think can apply in this situation. So first, in God's word, it's clear that we have really clear principles that it matters what we put in front of our eyes. God's word is clear that we should be cautious and careful about what we put in front of our eyes, what we observe in front of us. Psalm 101 talks about the followers of God following God with integrity, about not setting anything worthless before their eyes. And this same sentiment is echoed in Psalm 119 verse 37. And in 1 Corinthians 10, Paul tells us that in everything we do, we should do it as if we're doing it for God. And so the consistent theme throughout scripture is not that we get this clear prescription on whether or not we should play a violent video game or whether or not we should play a video game that depicts nude characters or a sex scene or something along those lines. But rather, scripture tells us that our relationship with God is the most important thing. So it trumps our biases, it trumps our traditions, it trumps our preferences, it trumps our passions passions, and our hobbies. And if there's something that you're doing that damages that relationship that you have with God, then that's something that you shouldn't do. And now I can already hear the one side kind of saying, see, don't you see that you're putting something worthless before your eyes? So you should just cut it all out altogether. And that's something where I want to pump the brakes a little bit. We'll get back to that in a second. The reality is a relationship with God should pretty much change everything about your life. It's going to turn it upside down and it's going to turn us away from our own preferences and toward God's preferences. God cares about what we watch and what we listen to and what we play because God cares about us. And so as a Christian, I do think that means that there are some video games that you probably should not play. I don't have a specific list that I'm going to list out here, but I do think that there's something about our relationship with God that steers us away from things that truly are worthless. And I think there's some part of the conversation that we can have that says, hey, maybe if you're playing a game that's really absurdly violent, or maybe you're playing a game that has really graphic sex scenes, are those things skippable? Can you just move past those things without observing them? If so, maybe that's okay. And if not, maybe that is something that you do need to avoid. And then to go back to where I told us to pump the brakes, I do want to land in the book of Romans. There's a passage in Romans where Paul is talking to a church that is deeply divided over what it looks like to live life as a Christian. There are certain people in that church that think you can't eat certain food because it's been offered to idols. And there's some other people that are like, who cares? And there's some people that think you have to worship corporately as a church on Saturday because that's the original Sabbath. And there's other people that are like, who cares? <laughs> Does that sound familiar to this conversation? You can read all about this in Romans chapter 14, but basically the solution that Paul offers to the church is that they should pursue peace and unity as the body of Christ. Even in the midst of deep disagreement, Paul doesn't say that one side, because they're right, needs to dominate the other and needs to assert their opinion and, and just proclaim their rightness over the other until the other changes their mind. Paul instead says that these things become a matter of conscience, even if the other person is wrong. Paul actually identifies the other party as the weaker brother, meaning that they're actually wrong in this, but it is a matter of conscience and it does become a sin to them. So if you come across someone that believes it's actually a sin to play video games or to play certain video games, it is actually a sin to them. And so for you to invite them to play a violent video game can cause them to stumble. And on the flip side, if you come across a person that says, who cares, I can play whatever I want, Maybe we don't attack that person as a heretic and elevate something to that level. And I think these are important conversations that we should be having, but we often just kind of don't because they become so emotional and we just kind of default to throwing sound bites at each other. And I say all of this as a gamer. I love playing video games. I'm passionate about doing this, but I do think that there's something about my relationship with God that calls me away from my own preferences when it comes to these things and toward my relationship with God. And that's a good thing. But hey, 
maybe I'm way off in all of this. I want to know your thoughts. What do you think about this conversation? Do gamers tend to have too loose of a restriction when it comes to the types of games that they can play? Are we too restrictive when it comes to what types of games we can play? I want to know your thoughts. Where do you see God's word playing into this? How does that guide you? How did you land where you're currently at with the types of games that you play? Let me know your thoughts. And as always, I want you to know that I'm praying for you. I've prayed for you as I've made this video. And if you have a specific request, you can leave a comment and I will pray for you specifically. But as always, thanks for watching this video. Remember that God loves you. I'm praying for you and I'll see you in the next video.